So I don't know what it sounds like um, at your end. Um, if it doesn't sound very good, you might find that it's actually your speakers. I just want to say that. It's not my harp. My harp does not sound tinny. She sounds fabulous. So I'm now going to move on to um, another Irish piece. Um, in fact, I must say there's a lot of Celtic music tonight because I would usually have performed for St. Patrick's for the uh, Irish Ambassador, Irish Association, uh, Bohivage Hotel, and obviously all of that was cancelled, but that's the repertoire in my head right now. So Eleanor Plunkett, um, it's an air composed by O'Carolan, and Eleanor Plunkett was a lady from County Meath in Ireland. songs that were absolutely ghastly for the uh, for the harp. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm just looking for what I need. Okay. So uh, this is uh, Benjamin Britten's setting of the Sally Gardens and I did some research on this. The words uh, are from a poem by Yeats. And Yeats said that he was inspired to write it after hearing an old peasant woman, woman singing this song um, when he was in Sligo. It was just a few lines of this song that he could remember. And um, I found that song. And the original that inspired this says, I took her in my arms, and to her I gave kisses sweet. She bade me take life easy, just as the leaves fall from the tree. But I, being young and foolish, with my darling, did not agree.
Okay, the next piece um, is the, the first composition I ever wrote for the harp. Um, I, um, <clears throat> I wrote it about 10 years ago. Um, let's just say I wasn't in a good place at the time. And it was called Time Out. Uh, because I think then I just I just needed time out. It was almost like I just I don't want to be going to work. I just I just want to like stay home. Wow, that's certainly not what we're feeling these days, is it? But let's be honest. So this piece has taken on a whole new meaning, I think, given the current situation where I actually want time out of my apartment. I'm happy to say that today the Swiss announced that they are going to start gradually doing our deconfinement. So here we go. <laughs> to some uh, Irish Celtic music again. Um, I'm going to do three pieces. Uh, one is called The Rights of Man, then The Lisnagan Jig, and then Merrily Kiss the Quaker. Um, so I did also some research on this, and it turns out the, the tune, the first tune, which is called The Rights of Man, is believed to be inspired by a book of the same name, which appeared in the late 1700s which was in support of the French Revolution. So the author, Tom Paine, was burnt to death. Then the publisher was arrested and copies of the book were burnt, except those that didn't make it into the fireplace were highly popular in Ireland and Scotland where people felt oppressed. Then, influenced by Paine's work, a later document called Déclaration des droits de l'homme was drafted by the first National Assembly during the French Revolution of 1789 
to be incorporated into the new constitution of France. The next year, the constitution was approved by the captive Bourbon king, Louis XVI, although he was executed soon afterwards.
Um, actually, um, it's very well known in the Appalachian Mountains um, in the, the US, and I can't find the words. Hello. And, um, but it's actually a Scottish song, as you can tell, because it refers to the Clyde. And that song is, uh, black is the color of my true love's hair. <coughs> Black is the color of my true love's hair. His lips are like some roses fair. The sweetest smile and the gentle. Okay, well, we've come to the final piece. As I said, uh, we're doing this relatively short because it's a test. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. My final piece is, um, it's a sonata by a French composer, Naderman, um, who was also a harpist. So, um, not sure why I kept this to last. I should have done it first to get it over and done with. It's a very scary piece. Let's hope it goes well.
Thank you. That's all, folks. Bye.